public comment on any items. There's comment cards in the back on that table. Quentin, please raise your hand. Turn them into Quentin. Good, how are you? Good. 
some more treatment. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Another day on the life. Yeah, I can't complain. Yeah. Doesn't do any good. Nobody cares. <laughs> Just trying to enjoy life along the way. And, you know. Yeah.
Donna had written to me and said she had some written. That's great. 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 I like to make sure things are up to date. City Clerk's Office. Apparently, you collected two, two years worth of uh, assessments, and according to them, you haven't spent anything. Is that true? I'd also like to know why uh, it seems the only people uh, making a profit from this, this uh, collection is the city, who's received $55,000 for recovery costs. They're charging, they're charging the bid uh, for recovery costs for the assessments. So they seem to be making some profit here. Um. Thank you. Liza Zapersky. Um, hi, I'm Liza. Um, I have two questions. One, if there's going to be 
an opportunity to question the SAFE Alliance, the SAFE group. I know it was really helpful for I think for law clubs or everyone in the office to be able to question the clean group, and it would help us to communicate with our tenants to what's going on. Um, also wondering if we're going to get a refund for the year that we um, didn't receive services. Thank you. Thank you, Liza. And we can address those. We'll address those later. Uh, so moving on to number three, and the the next item we're Mark. yeah. So all comment cards going forward to oh, Gwen. Give them to Gwen. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Marlene Hewitt. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. I just want to know: Are you going to be answering our questions this morning? Because these are specific questions, and we just really answer instead of just they're not statements they're questions thank you anything else <laughs> okay. you didn't answer, answer my question we're going to do our best to answer questions uh specifically but right now it's a public comment period and uh -huh. we're not required to answer this is not a q a session okay, so if you'd you like to if you'd like to have to add any more comments please do will there be a q a as we progress or we're going to be we're going to be sticking to our public agenda. Please continue. Um, well, the other issue is there was a street light on our corner of Hampton and Sunset, and we were told by the. You might know about this. That I think it's Mr. Goodfader. Is that? No, it's this guy here, yeah, Jeremy. Uh, uh, Jeremy, that um, it was removed because you asked for it to be removed because um, you couldn't afford to pay for it. Is that true? Thank you. Okay. Uh, so we're moving forward to item 3A, and uh, the next item is the nomination of bid property owner Connie Brooks to the board of directors. And I will say that that personally, uh, it's great to that we're in this position of nominating and and hopefully approving Connie Brooks, who's done an amazing job uh, volunteering specifically with the marketing arena, which is Connie's specialty. She, uh, she spoke at the last meeting. She's been involved spending hours and hours behind the scenes on the marketing effort, the BID logo, the, the BID uniform, and the BID website. And we were very fortunate to have your nomination before us today. I'm going to give some background on Connie. Connie owns Seabrooks Communications. Connie's a writer and communication strategist, and she has a lot of experience in nonprofit community outreach, entertainment, business development, and marketing communications. She's had clients such as UCLA, the YMCA of Metro LA, City National Bank, Loyola Marymount University, and the California Community Foundation. Uh, Connie also received a Master of Professional Writing from USC and a Bachelor of Social Welfare from the University of Illinois. And since 2009, this also really impressed me, uh, Connie's been a pro bono communications consultant for Taproot, which is a nationwide nonprofit hub for assisting other nonprofits. And I think that, that pro bono work is, is great and it coincides with the spirit members of it, getting back to the community. Connie is also a resident, which uh, is, is valuable and adds an additional resident perspective to the two or three that we already have on the board. And so uh, I, I'm uh, proud to be nominating you today. And I wanted to, before we call a motion, open this up to any other comments from any other uh, board members or chairs. I'll speak briefly and say that Connie has been an absolute joy and a gift to this organization. Um, she has really stepped up and she has mirrored the kind of um, board volunteerism and giving that I see from the rest of the board here. And so I think we're very pleased to add her to the board. She adds tremendous value to our organization. Our communications and marketing program would not be at all where it is right now if it were not for Connie. Um, we are going to do much more this year than I had ever expected that we would be able to do in that regard. Um, so I'm very, very pleased by this nomination. Thank you. 
Yeah, and I just want to reiterate everything that's been said. Mark's put in a lot of hours. Really, that's very organized and very talented. And we're just so excited to uh, have her helping us out. And looking forward to working with her on a continued basis. Yeah, she, I mean, she's been instrumental behind the scenes, getting a lot of the things, you know, the behind the scenes kind of, you know, um, marketing development and stuff. And it, I mean, just like Tara, <coughs> we wouldn't be where we are now without your help. So, thank you. Thank you very much. We need productive participation by our community to make this work. And uh, I've appreciated, I've known Connie for 20 some years, and uh, I've appreciated you as a person, and I'm happy to have you step into this and see the potential of your own uh, interests able to be expressed on the streets and help in the areas that you're interested in and your participation is huge. Uh, that's, how, that's what's going to make this work. Venice has for long been divided and always seems to have a contentious edge that keeps things from happening and the problems that we have today are greater than they've been and that's one of the reasons. So your participation is really dramatic we're looking for what we all envisioned when we started this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any public comment on uh, Connie Brooks's nomination? <coughs> no, I'm not. I don't want to speak on her behalf. I know who she is. Okay. Okay. So, uh, with that, is there a motion to approve Connie Brooks to the board of directors? Yeah. I move that we approve Connie Brooks to the board of directors. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand, please. Okay. Welcome to the board. <laughs> we have a chair. <laughs> Come on up. You're up. Absolutely. Am I allowed to say one thing? Absol sure, absolutely. <laughs> I, you can say more than one thing. John has been on the for 20 years, and Marlene, and Jack used to be my next on the other side. John and Marlene, that this is the beginning of being able to help better communication and help our interests be better, which I know you have not felt has happened. I don't think that's anyone's fault. I just think maybe, hopefully, that can be something that we start to kind of bridge the gap. And as I told you, if I'm wrong, I will admit it to you personally. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item is item 3B, which is a clean and safe service update. Tara will take this item. an update on where we're at with the clean and safe services. Um, we have asked our vendors to be ready uh, by May 1st. Um, it is my opinion at this point uh, that we may need an additional bit of time to do some testing of our systems. Um, there are a couple of key components that will not be in place until very close to the end of the month um, or perhaps a day or two after, which include our radio and dispatch system, which is essential to be able to launch our services. Um, as well as uh, uniforms, and we have a couple of facilities issues we're still working through. So not all of those issues are within our control. In fact, all of them involve a good number of people to actually get up and running. Um, so I do think we are not far off track, um, but I believe that services will launch sometime in the first half of May. Um, we are still having discussions about how to roll out our communications about what you should expect what those services will look like. We're very close to nailing down our initial deployment schedules and things like that. So we will be communicating with our email list. Um, we will be trying to put as much information as we can about the rollout on our website. Um, and depending upon the timing of the rollout, we may or may not have another board meeting uh, around that time. Um, so that will be another forum to come and find out what to expect, um, how the rollout is going to work, how you contact us to receive those services, et cetera. Um, so we'll be trying to push those communications through all of those levels. Um, again, newsletter, if you haven't signed up for our mailing list, 
please ask Quinnen uh, after the meeting how you can connect uh, with our mailing list. Um, or you can email us at admin at venicebeachbid.com and we'll send you the link to sign up for the mailing list. Uh, and then our website, uh, I believe, will be up very shortly with an initial couple of pages. It will not be perfect. It will not have all the pages and all the tabs functional. Um, but I think there'll be some good basic information uh, out there very quickly. Um, and I'm going to leave that there, but um, if any of you during uh, comment, etc., have questions I haven't answered, feel free to ask them at the end of each meeting. I always, in my CEO report, endeavor to answer the questions. I do take notes during the meeting. I do listen to the questions you ask, and I endeavor to answer those at the end of the meeting in my CEO report. Uh, so thank you. Does the board have any questions? Thanks for all, all your efforts. Um, Tara's been working tirelessly till 2 in the morning quite frequently, uh, and we appreciate it. And uh, a, a lot of us, um, this board has dedicated a, a lot of hours to making this launch successful, and I personally appreciate everyone's efforts uh, to, to help make this launch a successful one. So we're, we're uh, moving forward. I'm very happy with the progress. We're really excited to launch, and we'll be there very shortly. It's a heavy lift, and I could not do it alone. Um, I'm very grateful to have a board that has stepped in and consistently volunteers hours week to week to help with various components and pieces of it. It's been essential to launching it and launching it well. Thank you. Quentin, do we have any cards, public comment cards on, on this item? Mm -hmm. yeah. Liza, yeah, yeah. go for it. Um, I'm going to say it again just because it's important. If there's an opportunity to ask the same people some questions, it would really be great. I'm out there every single day. Last week, I had one guy in front of our building at 1413 spray Coke bottles at me and fuck you and take selfies and stuff. So it's, I really want to know like how it's going to work. And also, I have a lot of questions. If they're going to be armed, what's their schedule? Can we call them, et cetera? I'm out every day dealing with this. I'm excited to have some extra help to not have to do it by myself and just we would really love to be able to ask those questions so we can communicate it with our tenants and work with you to make this a smooth process, understand what their role is, what our role is, so we can work together. So just, again, asking if there's going to be an opportunity to ask the safe services some questions. Maybe less will be put on you of emailing how are these things going to be done. It would be super helpful for us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the next item is item C. And this is a marketing update, a presentation of the bid logo and uniforms, along with a website update. Tara and Connie. Um, so I'll lead it off um, and provide uh, an update of where uh, some of our items are at. So uh, in the items at the front, you may have seen, um, we do have a bid logo now. Um, we have finaled our bid logo and we put it into uh, design and production for some of the things we'll use it for, such as the uniforms, etc. Um, the uh, uniforms we had hoped to present today, um, but we did have a couple of pieces in our initial samples that we sent back uh, for uh, some changes. Uh, so we don't unfortunately have those today, but those are very close to being final as well and sent into production. Um, we are going largely with the colors of orange and blue. Um, and uh, there are various pieces of their, uni their standard uniform that will be black as well. So um, you'll see our folks out there in those colors. And um, when you see uh, uh, the folks in the safety vests who will be on foot, they'll have carts with them, etc. Those are our clean team members. And then you'll see folks sometimes on foot, most often on bikes, occasionally in vehicles. Um, those will be our safety members. And I'm going to turn it over to Connie for an update on. So we do have a website, um, but we haven't, we weren't able to make it live yet. There's still a few tests and a few links that aren't hooked up. But by, uh, this I can say definitively, I believe, by the very beginning of next week, I, I had moved heaven and earth to have it launched for today, but we just didn't quite make it, so sorry I, about that. I could not give her the support she needed no, to no, get no, no, the no. final that, copy. No, there was still there were still little glitches. I mean, there always are with these things. I mean, does it show on a phone? And 
So, so we, we needed to wrap up just a few loose ends, but it is ready to go, and hopefully that will be helpful to people. Um, the clean and safe issues are still being resolved, which is why some of your questions aren't answered, and they're not on the website yet. But as Tara, Tara said, we will be, um, we'll, we'll just continually be adding pieces. So what we've given you for now is as much information as we have. So I hope you'll find it helpful, even though it's not fully formed yet. Um, and it also is a place where, if you do have a question, you know, it, it's a it's a go-to place for answers. So again, venicebeachbid.com. Look for it. Beginning of next week. Yeah, <laughs> at a theater near you. No, really. No, it, 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 it's it's. It'll, be, it'll work on every device, so that's why we're waiting. But um, yeah, I would say Tuesday or Wednesday, but definitely towards the first part of next week. I think we have a, from what I can gather, a very good creative company. Tornado Creative okay. is uh, is doing a good job. Oh yeah, they're doing okay. a great job. Okay. Yeah, we're doing a great job. Good. Is, uh, any questions regarding the <laughs> marketing efforts so far? Thank you um, both very much, Absolutely. and, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing the launch. Uh, is there any public comment on item C, marketing? <coughs> okay, with that, the next item is item D. It's the board discussion and consideration of a motion to request an additional LAPD senior lead officer for Venice. And this is one that uh, I've been able to do some research on, and I, I realized that uh, I, I tried to understand the senior lead boundaries and what's inside those boundaries and who are these senior leads servicing really. So zone 14A11 is the zone that uh, both bid zones, one and two, sit within. This is a large geographic area. It stretches from Santa Monica to Marina del Rey Peninsula, and it goes east up to Abikini, and uh, Abikini, it jogs up to uh, Abikini in Washington, so it borders the marina. Uh, so inside this, of course, is the oceanfront walk and its surroundings, the third in Rose area, uh, the Washington Boulevard Commercial District, and a lot of residential neighborhoods, including the Walk Streets, the Rose Avenue area, the area neighborhood west of Abikini, uh, the canals, and it, it extends all the way south uh, to the Marina Peninsula. Um, so most importantly for me is, in addition to this geographic area, uh, the area draws 16 million people a year. So this has tremendous impacts on city services, on police resources, and uh, it's really, when you think about it, it's unique to Los Angeles, this senior lead zone. Um, and with that, I, I believe that it's important uh, that we pass a motion suggesting uh, that a senior lead officer or similar officer is added to the 14A11 zone. So I'm going to read the proposed motion. We'll, uh, we, we'll discuss it, open it up for public comment. Um, so the, mo the motion is as follows. Whereas Venice Beach is known to be one of the most visited destinations in Southern California, and whereas the unique nature of the area creates special service demands for city departments, particularly LAPD, <laughs> therefore the Board of Directors of the Venice Beach Business Improvement District urges Councilman Mike Bonham, Chief Charlie Beck, LAPD Police Commission President Steve Soberoff, Assistant Chief Beatrice Gramala, Deputy Chief Dennis Cotto, Captain James Setzer, and Captain James Roberts that funding and organizational resources be made immediately available for the creation of an additional senior lead officer or similar position for the 14A11 zone, uh, in addition to the current contingent of five senior lead officers assigned to Venice. 
So with that, I wanted to open it up for, for board discussion. So, oh, go ahead. We met with, it was Michael Moore. Right? Michael Moore was a chief of police officer, chief, assistant chief of police. And uh, didn't he say, I had to leave a little bit early, didn't he say that when the slow position was created, they created a certain number and that number hasn't changed? Yeah, I believe it was uh, created many years ago. And the city has changed a lot, the demographics of the city, and the, the conservation of people has changed, and the demands on resources have changed, but the senior lead, the, the senior lead position um, haven't really changed at all. So They've had the same number of same number, slow officers same number. in all the different areas. So right. did he leave room for some way for this to happen? I believe he did, uh, and, and uh, hopefully he did. And uh, if he didn't, this motion certainly makes a request to LAPD, and and I and I and I believe that you might be able to speak to this too, Taylor, that that Councilman Bonin um, would strongly support this as well. Absolutely, I was going to speak. Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome. I want to welcome Taylor, and we'll uh, oh, and, and we'll we'll, we'll uh, we consider motions like these are because when we do so, when the board takes a formal action, it represents the fact that there's a, a broader community consensus and it increases the pressure upon City Hall to respond to that. So um, this is sort of, I would say, I would characterize this as one of our first forays into, we all know we need more resources. We should be asking for them. We should be asking for them in a louder and in a more organized fashion. And the more that we do that, we won't get everything we asked for, but if you don't ask for anything, you'll get nothing. So from that perspective, I think it's, you know, the feasibility of it is to be determined. There are certainly things that have to occur and things that are seemingly rigid that have to move to accommodate that. But if, it, if this moves the needle at all um, in terms of more resources for the area, then I think that's a good thing. I, I agree, and I think efforts like this, uh, which will benefit all of Venice, uh, is something that we can help uh, take on as we learn more about police deployment and other resource deployment for that matter. I know that one of the things we talked about is to make sure that the baseline of services that we have within the bid boundaries is not reduced. And, uh, and I know we're waiting for the city to provide the baseline so that we, our, our services that will be launched will be supplemental and not replacing uh, city services. That's important to us. So I think this this motion goes along with, uh, as Tara mentioned, something that's important that we, we take on and that the, the bids voices know. Are we calling for a, a second slow position in the 14A11 area? as they see fit, or are we calling for someone more localized to the bid area? That, the, the, the way I phrase it, and it's a, a good point for conversation and discussion, is that um, this will be a supplemental senior lead position for the zone. And, and I think for, 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 the, for the 14A11 zone, the boundaries of which I described, um, and I think, I think at that point, having an additional senior lead officer will uh, will allow some of the it, it will allow some of the, the uh, for more service to be provided in the, the boardwalk zone and and frankly take pressure off of the uh, the senior lead to be able to provide resources to the rest of the zone. So I think that the focus, the what's that? Okay, the the focus is. Is on the is is for the entire zone, but but uh, but but this this will allow for uh, for for additional resources resources uh, on the boardwalk as well as other parts of the zone. So our, you, you, your last sentence is the part that confuses us. In addition to the current contingent of five SLOs currently assigned to Venice, so. Five senior lead officers who currently oversee the area. There's five senior lead officers in all of Venice. 
in the within the Venice, within the, within that's the Venice for 24 hours a day. And that's, for, and that's for all the various zones that include 14A11. That's correct. This would just be to create one new that's only for 14A11. That's correct. So I'm just wondering if what other people think of here. Should we be, I mean, what do we think will help uh, the area, the bid area the most? You know, would it be adding a slow in 14A11 and letting the police, I mean, not that we have to say over it, but do we want to encourage the police to add a slow to 14A11? Or do we want to maybe have a more narrow um, view in our encouragement? You know, do we want to say something about, you know, with a concentration toward the bid area or something like that? Um, as representatives of the bid area and knowing that the bid area, you know, is, receives a lot of impact. I mean, we are a unique area and that is part of the reason we feel that if they review all their slows that they figured out, you know, their slow areas that they figured out in 1988 or whatever it was, that they might think that another one is needed down, down here specifically. I'm just wondering how people feel about maybe narrowing that language a little bit. I, I don't, you know, want to go overboard, but I, I think we should be proponents of our bid area too. It's a, it's a very good point, and when you said that, my thought went to, rather than getting ahead of that in terms of narrowing our request, my thought would be that we sort of let call volume do that work for us, where when, you know, when, when we met with Lieutenant Solomon and he said, you know, maybe to El Segundo, but 85% 80, of my calls are on the boardwalk. So I wonder if the, the, just the natural call volume and the request to the PD will sort of dictate the narrowest or the narrowness, operationally speaking, as opposed to us requesting it. You see what I'm saying? I I do, and I don't disagree. I just if somebody's area of responsibility is more narrow, they may be able to look at the bid area in a different way. If they're responsible for Marina Del Rey to Santa, Santa Monica, Monica and they're sharing that responsibility with the one other person, um, I'm not sure it would be the same as if they're only responsible for, even even considering all area. You know, I, just like Wreck and Parks has um, dedicated created, you know, in the past several years, a new position that just oversees the boardwalk because it's such a big you know, park in their district. Um, you know, maybe having a little more narrow slope. I mean, I guess that's what I'm advocating, but. Okay. Any other comments on, on, uh, on the motion in general or additions to Steve's uh, Suggested uh, potential suggested addition regarding concentration in the bid area. I actually have a, I have a uh, something I'd like to pose to the audience. Um, if any of you wish to respond to during public comment on this item, um, I think it would be interesting to hear. I, I think what I would say is, I think this bid area represents both the boardwalk and the inland areas. However, I think those inland areas are also heavily affected by the boardwalk. So I think what perhaps the board is struggling with is that they don't want this to be a zero-sum game. Um, they see that the greatest calls of service for LAPD seem to be the boardwalk. However, we all know that people move freely at will, and people causing problems on the boardwalk also cause problems in the inland areas. So I think um, it might be helpful for us to hear from broader public comment how you feel about if the board were to phrase the motion in such a way that uh, indicated that they felt those resources were most needed to deal with the boardwalk, I think they don't want to do that in a way that feels like they're disenfranchising or not seeing the needs of the inland areas. I think the two are related and there's a synergy. So I think the desire at bottom of the board is simply to get more resources for Venice as a whole with the understanding that 
one of the biggest dreams is the boardwalk. That is such a hub of activity. So I'd love to hear comments from folks uh, in terms of what your thoughts are on how we phrase that notion. Any other any other comments on on the geographical area? I, I certainly understand your point, Steve. I and it's it's a great point that you raise and one that we should think about and discuss. I uh, <coughs> I get concerned when we start to sort of narrow resources to within a bid zone when there's there's distance between the bids and zones. The zones are jagged and not uh, and, and uh, well, I, I, and, and I don't so mean there's exactly <laughs> the only the bid air. The, I, I get your point. Yeah, and I'm not sure the best way to achieve what we I, want to achieve. I mean, it, it could be west of Pacific Avenue, uh, for example. Uh, if if we wanted to have more focus on an area that includes the boardwalk, um, not just the boardwalk, but the western and the walk street westerly area. I, um, west of I also, I don't think LAPD is, LAPD is here today, but I suspect what they might say if they were here is, if you get us more resources, we know best how to deploy them. And so part of it also may be a, do we want to defer to some degree to LAPD to figure out where those resources are best needed to spread the workload evenly amongst their slows. So that's another. And it, it might be easy to move the needle, but hard to achieve the point. And I think the narrower we get, the more specific it's going to challenge their current existing protocol. And it just sort of leaves us once more back where we started. So my suggestion is that we be as general as possible and also think of this, whether it's today or at some point soon, in relation to park rangers, where they can have the immediate support in the exclusive park area, where so many of the problems are that draw them from the other park, <coughs> the other neighborhoods and the walk streets, et cetera. Perhaps we should consider adding a line to the motion that is something to the effect of um, this may not be the only solution to the scenario, but more resources are clearly needed to deal with the issues in Venice. Um, the bid board is open to dialogue about um, any scenario that achieves this goal of more resources, more public safety resources for Venice. So, I mean, I don't know if that's necessary. I, I think, you know, extra language. I think it's, it's generally it's, better to be specific. It's fine. Though. But I mean, I think we I'm willing to vote for this. Okay. <laughs> it looks good to me. I just wanted to open it up for discussion, and yeah. I think everybody's made good points. And no, it's a good let's, point. Let's move ahead. We could just simply consider a separate motion for a future time where we would do the same thing to recreation and parks, specifically regarding park rangers. Mm -hmm. Just as we're doing with LAPD. That might be a better approach. But it might help LAPD to also understand that the same push that is being made for more resources from them is being made elsewhere so that their resources aren't just sort of pigeonholed mm -hmm. and they'll have a broader attempt to be able to do a little bit more. They're aware of the need. <coughs> It's, it's not a secret to them. So. It's, a, it's a goal within the department itself. And can we speak after the publics too? Because I expect we'll hear some things that maybe we're not Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, yeah, we can have more discussion after. Okay. So uh, it'll be great to hear from Representative Taylor Basley from Councilman Mike Bonnet's office. Yeah. Taylor, hey. welcome. I appreciate the uh, motion because this underscores and echoes exactly what Councilmember Bonnet has been saying for years. Uh, after the shooting that happened a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, um, there's two shootings. After the second shooting, which I happened to be 30 feet away from personally, because it was the night of the Ben Sarr crawl, and I was, I was going around with all the Ben Sarr crawl stuff, uh, the council member was quickly emailing and calling the, the, the police chief to underscore and echo exactly this, uh, th this concern. And with all the activity at Venice Beach, with all the population at Venice Beach, that we need more officers. And it's something we've been saying for a while, and I think now is the right time to strike and make that ask because there's been so much activity lately. So to that point, we have uh, a meeting already on the books. I have a meeting already on the books on Tuesday with Commander Chow and Ca uh, Captain Setzer to talk about more resources at Venice Beach. So a motion like this is very helpful in showing that this is demanded and needed uh, by the community. It gives us 
a little bit of added ammunition, so I appreciate that. I don't know if the solution is going to look exactly like a beach slow. Um, <coughs> you know, so let's keep going. Where's that? Uh, one minute. He's allowed two. The, well, I'll, I'll just finish. Please finish your thought. Yeah. Uh, it, it probably won't look exactly like a beach slow because, to be quite frank, Venice has a, has a lot more slows than and any other neighborhood in, in the Pacific Division. Um, uh, Playa Vista, Del Rey, and parts of Westchester, and I think there's another neighborhood, only have one, they share one slow. So it's, it's, it's there's, there's, it probably won't look like a beach slow, but what Mike's been specifically pushing for is 24 seven uh, staffing at the beach substation, and a dedicated crew at the beach substation 24 seven, in addition to extra officers. Um, and m potentially an empowering of the beach lieutenant, because we already have a lieutenant who's dedicated to the, to the beach. They're not a senior lead officer whose job is to interface with the public, uh, but operationally, there, there already is kind of autonomy with the beach division. So, um, so we're, we're looking at the 24-7 thing, looking at more officers, and looking at a reconfiguration. And hopefully I'll be able to report back after Tuesday some measure of success. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. Elizabeth Kitchen. Oh. Do you want to get one minute? <laughs> you know what? Go start, and I'll be glad to, to extend additional time on it. And John, I'll extend additional time to you, too, and Marlene as well. So, uh, go ahead. In, in, in regards to what we're discussing here, you mentioned perhaps using this extra LEPD senior officer just for the boardwalk. So that's a definite concern because you mentioned the district is all jagged it can cut up. If we're going to employ more people, we should all benefit. I don't think anybody this. suggested just for the boardwalk. No, no, I'm just saying that there was more need at the boardwalk. But my studio building is on Market Street in Ennis. And I see the people going to, I mean, I see the ocean from my building. So um, the people that go to the boardwalk pass my building. I mean, it's just, that's the way it is. And since we all are being assessed as, as a group, we should all be treated equally, whatever we are, whether we're on the board or. Now, I'm sure there'll be more calls, possibly, for the boardwalk. But that doesn't mean that, you know, we can't call two and then we will have equal share of this, of this extra of security. Because we need it also where I am. It's, it would be the, to me, it would feel safer and better. Thank you. John O'Keele. Okay. Uh, and there was just two stabbings on 4th and Rose. Um, these security agents that these people want to bring into uh, <coughs> um, they are contracted to patrol on municipal properties. They have no authority to govern those areas and cannot enforce governable rules of conduct. So in other words, they have the same rights as the homeless people. These people that are going to be marching around in uniforms. Also, the uh, Office of Risk Management has decided that the bid should lower their liability uh, costs from three million to one to two million. Now, if one of these security people are murdered, because we see now that the homeless have guns, they have knives, um, that's a liability issue. And the city uh, is protecting, uh, is trying to prevent uh, adequate liability. Uh, the other things I, I would like to mention is that uh, with regard to the city contract, the planning reports for each fiscal year uh, have never been uh, revealed. It's never been revealed whether reports have been approved by the city council. Quarterly activity reports to date have not existed. A certificate of public uh, accounts, accounts report for the past fiscal year, not, not there. Quarterly newsletters to all assessed property owners doesn't exist. Um, the only thing that does exist, from what I can see, is the recovery cost that the city is charging the bid, our tax, our tax money. Um, 
So there's a lot of uh, problems here. Also, with the police, with regards to the police department, this is a change of mandate. There's nothing in the bid, uh, original bid uh, management plan that mentions anything about this um, for increased police protection. But as we can see, um, nothing has changed over the last 20 years. Um, and again, that's not in the scope of uh, the bid. Thank you. Michael Lipson. Yes, at, at last week's, last month's uh, BNC meeting, uh, Senior Lead Officer Christian De La Torre stood up and requested, said that the, every, every summer there's a supplement number of officers assigned to Venice. And the police department itself is trying to get that become a permanent year-round additional influx of officers. And she just asked for committee support along those lines where we contact uh, anybody and just request that the some of the detail be made a permanent thing. Thought that your board should take that into consideration. Thank you for the public comment. That's just how I a couple of things for me. Uh, one, what Taylor brought up about usage of the subdivision, which um, Mike and a lot of community members championed probably almost 20 years ago. Uh, and I, I believe it's been underutilized and it's a great resource that cost the city about a half a million dollars to build at that time. And he's 100% right. It should be a uh, 24 hour, 24 seven substation to, um, to try to enhance public safety and, and prevent crime. So I think that that's, a, that that's something we should research along with the deployment numbers that you mentioned. Um, I think that's something that we should take up and look into and perhaps uh, uh, in the near future, looking at additional motion uh, on, on that front, because I think that's important. So I think uh, thanks for the public comments, and I, I believe we should, we should, listening to the public comments and sort of the overall sentiment, I believe, of the board, stick with the original motion, um, uh, unless there's additional comment about that. Any comment? Okay, I'm going to read the motion again. Uh, whereas Venice Beach is known to be one of the most visited destinations in Southern California, and whereas the unique nature of the area creates special service demands for city departments, particularly LAPD, therefore the Board of Directors of the Venice Beach Business Improvement District urges Councilman Mike Bonin, Chief Charlie Beck, LAPD Police Commission President Steve Sobroff, Assistant Chief Beatrice Grimala, Deputy Chief Dennis Cotto, Captain James Setzer, and Captain James Roberts that funding and organizational resources be made immediately available for the creation of an additional senior lead officer or similar position for the 14A11 zone in addition to the current contingent of five senior lead officers assigned to Venice. Is there a second? Second. second okay. All in favor? Please raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. I just want to say quickly, um, to John's point, John, if I remember correctly, at the last meeting, the one that you guys were here for, there was actually a public request to have the board investigate getting another SLO position. And, and while it was already on the table, this really was a response to a community request. And it is within the scope of the board, I believe. I mean, I think you're probably more knowledgeable than I am, but I believe it is because as Tara was saying earlier, part of our mandate is to amplify the community's voice. So if somebody brought it up, these guys investigated it, I wasn't on the board yet, and it, it is, it's part of a service in addition to the clean and safe that the bid brings to our community. It's the ability to reach out to the city and ask for not less services, but actually more. Okay, so that's my communication. May I respond to that? I, that I don't know. I don't know the rules of order. <laughs> John, let John take a minute. Go ahead. Let's start. Okay, well, I just want to say that this is this is a nonprofit corporation, which I've been forced to be a part of. My taxes have gone up fifty percent. Now I'm hearing that all the activities are going to be on the boardwalk, which it originally was with us was for. I've always said I've always maintained that there needs to be more police activity in Venice. For years, and um, well, there will be. Now, it's not now, the, you know, now the mandate is changing. You know, it's like put a put a carrot 
on a stick and follow that around. Um, well, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. As a nonprofit, um, uh, there's so many things that you're violating. Okay, I'm sorry. I think I opened a can of worms and yeah, I didn't mean to. Have. So That's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stifle myself. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's just privatization of basic services. I think this is a difficult question to answer until we actually see our resources in the field. And it is my hope that the members of the community will see that the services are spread throughout the bid in accordance with the assessments paid. Thank you. Uh, until and then, it's a theoretical conversation. And it but sounds to me, John, like you support this. In I don't support anything. You, I don't, you know, you forced this on me. I, didn't, I, didn't, I have not done we're, anything to we're talking, yeah, but Let's, let's we're continue. About the I, want to con I want to continue with the, the agenda motion, item. The motion is not part of the bid. Okay. Uh, the next item is item E, the board discussion and consideration of the bid's 2018 annual planning report. Tara. Yes. Um, uh, in your packet is a copy of the annual planning report that we propose to submit to the city. Uh, the board is free to make suggestions, comments, or changes to this. Um, uh, uh, Steve Heeman, who is our treasurer, uh, and I worked with our council firm to come up with this budget. It, uh, he's very closely uh, to our management district plan. Um, we are permitted to vary by up to 10% within the budget category per year. This budget is pretty on the nose. Um, our percentages um, uh, in our original management district plan are 73%, 20%, and 7%. Um, if you look through it, you'll see we're, we're very close on all those targets. So we are, within, we are well within um, the variation allowed. Um, this is, you know, forecasting forward. So this report is a looking forward at the year. Um, there are other reports that we will file at the end of the year. Um, we also, I will take this opportunity to update, um, we are now current with our quarterly reports and our quarterly newsletters. All of those have been submitted to the city. Uh, the quarterly newsletters were actually done in a timely fashion, um, but the clerk's office did not have them on file. Um, the quarterly reports we have caught up on. We've had a few things going on, uh, but we are caught up on the quarterly reports, and with the annual planning report, we will be complete on our submissions to the city. Uh, we do still have an outstanding conversation to have with them in regards to the refund of assessment revenues. We have not yet heard back from them. We sent a letter requesting uh, to open that dialogue. Um, so with that, I open this up for any uh, suggestions for changes, edits, questions, etc. I have a question. What, uh, where the variations occur, where are they? And, and are they one or two percent? Uh, oh, so if you, go, if you go to page uh, two and three, open, open so up to that page. This is supposed to be 73 percent and 73 more. So, so, so the original plan was 73% and yes. it's very, very right. uh, 20 versus 20.4, okay. okay. And then just to fit in, it would be 70. Okay. So, so we'll see, all of our budget categories vary by actually less than half a percent. So we're, we're, pretty, on, we're pretty on the note. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Tara and Steve Human, our treasurer, for all of your efforts on this. We appreciate it. Any other board comment? Before we go to public comment. Okay. Is there any public comment on this item? Thanks, buddy. Okay. okay, Marlene O'Keefe. Hi, I'm just wondering, Tara. Um, we, I haven't seen any quarterly reports or quarterly newsletters. I don't think anybody here has either. Is this a public quarterly report, or is this just for the city, or is it just for amongst yourselves? Maybe um, you can help me with that. I will answer it. That's a good point of order. So the quarterly newsletters, the ma mailings that we've done to property owners are considered quarterly newsletters for the purposes of our launch period. Those will get more informative over time as we build up our marketing program. So the city clerk's office is fine with, we've done four mailings since the bid uh, signed the contract with the city. Those have been accepted as our quarterly reports. They will become more robust as we have more information to share with you. Um, but those have been our, our uh, external communications thus far. 
in terms of the quarterly reports, those are internal reports we file with the city. You are welcome to request a copy of them, but they are um, they're part of our contract with the city. They're not per se reports that we disseminate typically. I, I just feel since this is um, we're a small group of people that we should be made we should have knowledge about what's happening behind the scenes in a more um, specific way rather than these general little postcards and, and beeps because if we don't know what's going on then we have nothing to respond to and you're keeping all of us in the dark and it's not really beneficial to anybody. We're all going to get angry. I understand. So the quarterly reports and the annual planning report are things that we're required to submit to the city and the city is the target audience for those reports. However, now that we have a website that's about to go live, we're going to post those things on the website so that anybody who wants to access them can access them. Um, but again, you'll see when you, if you read them, they're not really sexy, stakeholder communication oriented in their nature. They are driven by or structured to meet requirements of the city that we have in terms of people. What we're really interested in, I think, is really the financial. We're going to put the, exactly the, the how much you spend be, on a who point, and where. Point taken, and they'll be posted on the website. And, right. and your point about transparency is, is uh, we'll a good have one. More detail. Yeah, there's yes. a whole PDF library on there. And if you, if you have a question that you don't get an answer to on the website, you can contact us, and we'll do our best to get it for you. So it's been difficult to get 100%. 100%. We, just that, just Okay. That's why. That's that's one of the reasons I volunteered to help, Marlene, because I, you know, I, I shared your concerns, and I don't feel it was anyone's fault. But yeah, we we're, we're working on it. I promise you. Um, there are a lot of things that we want to do. Right now, ninety-four percent of our resources are going into launching the Clean and Safe program. So on some of those things, yes. Getting you all documents, all access to everything. It has not been something that we have been able to devote as much time to as we'd like, but we are moving towards that. We're trying to do a little bit at a time, but the priority is launching the Clean and Safe programs. So that's really, honestly, the next month or so is launching those and fine tuning those programs. Um, communications activities will continue to improve, but it will be slowly and incrementally at first, and it will gather steam more later this year. Um, and in regards to um, financial reports, we are working on those. We are still in the process of setting those up with our accountant. At this time, I believe we will be ready to start presenting more detailed financial information at next month's meeting. So we, Steve and I have been meeting regularly to move towards that. So. Thank you. Uh, okay, with that, the public comment is closed. And is there a motion to ratify the bid 2018 annual planning report? Yeah, I'd like to make that motion. Great. Is there yeah. a second? Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Thank you. All right. The next item is item F <coughs> the approval of the minutes from. Uh, January 5th, 2018, February 9th, 2018, and March 9th, 2018, board meetings. Is there any public comment on, on this item? Okay. Is there any board comment or questions uh, about the, the minutes? So our our goal for the to keep the meetings from going uh, too over time and, and value everybody's opinion, um, we're gonna in a, probably do the uh, adopt minutes on a quarterly basis rather than on a monthly basis. So that's why we're doing this uh, in a lump. Thank you, Point in, uh, Thank you for helping put together all the minutes um, and taking notes of the meetings. We appreciate it. And agendas and minutes are one of the things that we'll be adding to the website as soon as possible as well. Okay. So is, uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from January 5th, 2018, February 9th, 2018, and March 9th, 2018 board meetings? I make a motion to approve the minutes from the 
dates you just mentioned. Is there a second? Second it. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, item four, uh, our final item, Tara Devine, uh, take it away. So I think maybe one of the things that is good to sort of start at the top of my report is to just talk a little bit about um, why, about how our meetings are structured. Um, and uh, I, one of the things I think this board is trying to balance um, Typically, these meetings are structured in a fashion where public comment is taken um, and board discussion is had, but there's not a si same time back and forth live discussion or debate with between the two. Um, and this is typical of formal meetings of this nature um, because it can really <coughs> kind of get out of hand. It can lead to a protracted discussion. It can lead to um, etc. So this is a more structured meeting. I understand that some folks may not like that structure. Um, however, um, we're trying to balance that and we're trying to have a dialogue with you. So we are, know that we are listening to you. Um, we are listening to public comment when the board discusses things. I hope that you see that they're trying to respond to those comments during their discussion. And then I am primarily for the moment using my report each month to also respond to um, items that were raised uh, during the public comment. Um, so I appreciate your patience with that format. Um, I understand it might not be what everyone likes. Uh, it's the structure we're using now, and we'll continue to try and, and find ways to um, balance all interests and make people feel heard. Um, so with that, So, uh, in terms of uh, the refund, uh, as, as I mentioned um, uh, briefly earlier, um, we did, as a result of last month's board action, we did send a letter to the city asking them uh, how, if and how, that might occur. Um, we have not yet received a response. Um, I think I also mentioned at a prior meeting that the city clerk's office is under a good bit of deluge themselves right now. Uh, they uh, have more bids renewing this year than any year in the past, um, and they are down two of their supervisors in the unit uh, that oversees bids. Uh, so I uh, expect that they will respond and that we will have that conversation. Um, that conversation is likely to also potentially involve the controller or some other folks. Uh, it could involve the city attorney in that conversation. So I believe I said at a prior meeting, I believe it will take some months to get to an answer or a resolution on the refund. Um, so in terms of expectations, I would not expect to see a check in the mail next month. It is going to be a longer conversation, and I think it's going to be um, difficult to have and get through that conversation until the city clerk's office completes their bid cycle. So most bids uh, need to be re renewed. Uh, prior to the July 4th recess of City Council in order to make the assessor's tax rolls in the fall. So <coughs> somewhere around uh, City Council recess, their plate will dramatically drop. Um, I believe at least one of their supervisors is also due back uh, in the near future. I, I think that we should still contact them. This is an important item. Our members uh, for um, the board decided on the motion. We got a lot of input from our constituents and members of the bid, and we should contact the, the uh, city have clerk's it. office I have. And, again, and perhaps um, <laughs> Taylor. This is an important one. We, we, could, we could use uh, uh, the council office's help on this one. OK, thank you. To, in regards to communication about our clean and safe program, um, uh, we're not trying to be cagey, but to give you an idea, you know, we're, we're working, there are about, there are more than, a, I'd say, four dozen major tasks that have to happen in order to have our facilities open, to have our teams in place, et cetera. And there are probably hun a couple hundred subtasks that fall under that. Um, so where we're at in terms of clean and safe programs, uh, we are fairly far along with the setup, ordering equipment, uh, hiring and staffing. 
none of those things are 100% complete, but all of them are well underway. Um, we've had uh, several conversations about what the initial sort of patrol routes or service routes will be for the clean and safe teams, uh, hours of deployment, etc. We're pretty close to nailing down our initial hours of deployment and those routes, but we don't yet have something to share with you um, in paper yet. We're close on that. Uh, so one of the things that we'll be discussing over the next couple of weeks is how to package that, and I, I believe Connie will be helping us with communicating that, but we're going to try and put that together in a succinct, understandable format, something that you could distribute to your tenants, like a flyer or a page on the website that you can refer them to that answers sort of the basic questions about that. The other thing I will say is that uh, the goal of our clean and safe programs is to make the district as clean and as safe as much of the time as possible. So we will start with an initial schedule and schedule for services. Over the first X number of months, we will continue to refine that as well. So again, it's great to be on our mailing list or to follow our website because we'll keep you apprised of any of those changes as they it's happen. It's your responsibility to contact us. Not us to contact you. John, please let her finish the report. Go ahead, continue. So, just so everyone in this room knows, for us, when we form this bid and when we start this bid, the only information we have to reach you are the mailing address you have on file with the assessor's office. So, that's our starting point, and that's we have sent a number of mailings over the year, over the last year plus. Um, we have encouraged in every one of those mailings for folks to sign up for a mailing list um, from a both timeliness perspective, an efficiency perspective, and a cost perspective, we can't continue to do mailings for everything there is. So we have really made a push to get folks to sign up for the email list. It is a reasonable way for us at a reasonable cost and a quick speed to get you information that you might want to have. And the website is there 24-7 whenever you want to access it. So we believe those are the best tools in the modern age to reach folks. We understand that some folks may not want to sign up for the mailing list, that's totally fine. Um, and there are, uh, on rare occasion, there are things like, for instance, when the bid renews, we will send those materials by mail again. Um, so uh, if there is a, a larger sense or feeling that um, uh, UPS mail is preferable to email or website, we could divert those resources. But I haven't heard that from a majority of our stakeholders. Um, we're trying to do everything we do. We're trying to do the most for the least. So that's really a huge part of our goal. I think we understand that the money that we're working with is the communities. We're trying to get the most out of that that we can. We're trying to do the maximum we can with the least amount of money. Um, and I think that's one of uh, the reasons why our bylaws uh, in particular call that board members are limited to property owners in the district who are paying the assessment. We want the people at this table to have skin in the game. We want this, the board and the decisions to be made by people who are paying assessments into the district. Um, we think that keeps uh, folks really focused on that bottom line and how money is spent, and we spent very wisely. Um, other, uh, John, I did hear your question on Abbott Kinney, um, but I have answered that on, at several, at least two other meetings. Mm -hmm. I know that you don't like the answer I'm giving you. What is the answer? But uh, I'm not going to continue to answer the same question. See that? I have no answer. This is, these people are in charge of our money. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, I think somebody should have a say here. John. You know, I want to just say. John. John. How much money you've contributed John, uh, John, to John, I'm going to open it for public comment after she's finished. John, I'll give you that to look at. Hold John, on. I will respond. There's I'll give, and I'll give this guy over here who's John, a please. hypocrite taking down street lights on our corner. John, please have a seat. <laughs> just like we'll open up, I'm going to open up the public comment. I have a help. You'll have enough. Just Go like ahead. that, John. Um, I will respond. John, you brought up some new points today, and I'm happy to respond to those. Um, the comment about Office of Risk Management, I have no frame of reference or no information, uh, I don't know where that information came from and I have no, I have no answer for it. It was an email to you. Risk management with regard to insurance. 
I'm sorry, I oh, will have to go back and look for that. I This does not ring any bell for me. I don't understand the comment, so I cannot respond to it. Um, I previously did say our quarterly reports are filed, um, our quarterly newsletters are filed and current, and as of today, um, we will be submitting uh, in the next couple of days, we actually submitted online to them, um, so we will be submitting our annual planning report in the next few days. Uh, those are all the documents that we owe the city at this time. Um, and you asked a question about the recovery costs. But you're six months behind. Hmm? You're six months behind. It was due November 1st. This is not a public you can file a public period. comment card okay. for after when the report Oh, yeah. Okay. Just take the money. Okay. Um, and you also uh, talked about the recovery cost of the city. So, yes, in our budget um, each year, in a typical year, the cost uh, to our bid is in the, I believe, uh, low to mid $30,000. Um, that is a fee uh, that bids pay, that it's a percentage basis um, uh, that bids pay, and that helps cover, frankly, some, probably not all, of the city's costs of overseeing our bid, uh, compliance things. As you know, the city clerk's office um, handles a great deal of your calls, your inquiries. Um, That's they, wrong. They oversee the billing. No, hold they, on. Wait till, wait till public comment each year we have to prepare an annual levy that reflects any land use changes in the district, any assessment changes that are based on, we, we don't change the assessments year to year. There are only two instances where they change. If the board votes on an annual increase or if something about the property changes. So if it goes from a vacant lot to a new building or if it goes from a building to a vacant lot, then a portion of your assessment is related to the building square footage. We adjust for that, for example. So those are the types of changes. Um, we have to submit those each year, and the city reviews those. Those are an example of some of the tasks that the city does. They also review our quarterly reports, our financials, et cetera. Um, they're responsible for um, coordination for various things with the city council that relate to bids. So that fee, which is in a typical year in the mid-30s, relates to that. In our first year of operation, uh, the fee was higher because we did have to do a manual billing of assessments. So that doesn't, does result in a, a one-time uh, higher fee in the initial year. Uh, and that uh, was because our bid was not approved in time for the assessor's role in 2016. Uh, because it was approved late and because we went through two ballots, um, the city clerk, as, you, as those of you who pay certainly know, had to prepare a manual billing that was separate from the property tax. So that was about uh, about a $20,000 or so effort. They have to manually prepare those bills and send them to each of you and then deal with the calls and questions that come in, as we do. Um, and now, yes, and now they will be working on a, uh, hopefully, uh, if they accept our inquiry, they will be working on a refund. So those are an example of the types of things. Uh, it's, it's a cost recovery for the clerk's office. Uh, depending upon uh, uh, how much they use us, I, I think it's safe to say that we're probably not recovering all of the cost of overseeing our programs. Uh, but that is what that line item is, and you will see that in the budget year to year. Um, currently, uh, this year I believe it's in the in the mid to low 30s. Uh, last year it was in the low 50s. So. And I think that's it on my on my notes and questions. Thank you. Oh yes. Um, allied, uh, allied, we uh, uh, partly their resources and partly we elected. We're still in the process of interviewing for their uh, account manager position. So both Chrysalis and Allied will have um, an on-site supervisorial position that is dedicated to our account, and they'll be responsible for overseeing the teams and the team members. And within the teams, there are um, some supervisor, some like mid-level supervisor as well, and then regular officers. So um, on Chrysalis' side, um, we do have our account manager, uh, and very happy uh, with that choice. I think we'll do well. Um, on Allied side, we're still in the process of interviewing. So we've done a couple of rounds of interviews. We understand how important this position is, and we found the qualities. We found the qualities that we like. In, in a good number of them, and we're still, um, and yet very different candidates. So we're still going through a process of, is there any candidate that has all of the qualities that we like in one? Um, and if not, uh, which person has the most qualities that we like? So we're still going through that process, and quite frankly, 
Um, I think we also felt that having a presentation from Align would be much stronger and much more specific if that person is already in place. Um, so we uh, expect to have a presentation from Align at our next meeting. Thank you. Any public comment point? Okay. Do I get a chance to talk again? Marlena Pulick. <laughs> I have a question um, regarding the street light, and I think it's directed to um, Jeremy Weinstein. Um, if you could give me some background on it. I remember the street light was there, and I called the city many times about it. Where is it there? Just so, it's so, on the corner of Hampton Drive and Sunset Avenue on the southeast corner. I was told um, it was owned by somebody else other than the city. And then we saw a few days ago that street light being removed, and we were told that it's um, not affordable by the by, I guess Jer Jeremy Weinstein, who, who manages it. So they said my is name. It, is there name was on? We can, can talk about. Let's talk about this after, after the meeting. You, you, okay. you I, I think I think you should talk about it. Let's talk about it after the meeting. Okay. The other question, the question I do want specifically is to understand Dot mm -hmm. Abbott Kinney. Um, I don't really feel satisfied, as I don't think anybody else here has been feel satisfied in understanding why they weren't included. Thank you. I think that's another one that it's been addressed at the meeting, and let's let's the let's talk about it. The and and, and uh, let's move on. Thank you, Eliza Zapersky. Um, thank you, Tara, very much for addressing the question that I had about meeting with Ally. I really appreciate that. Um, I just want to express that you know. I understand we're not going to get a check in the mail like next week from the city, you know, but from the get go, I just want to express, so it's on the record, that we're still frustrated. Our office has been involved from the beginning on the mailing list, calling people, calling the city clerk's office, calling the city attorney's office for like a year. It's just, it's very frustrating for us to not, I understand it's taking a lot of work and it's taking more time than you anticipated. It's very frustrating for us to not have anything to tell our tenants, to not have, you know, to not see things. I understand it's taking a longer time, but we're still very frustrated to not have evidence or answers. And I feel like we've been doing our due diligence, at least from our part, in calling and trying to find out, you know, what we can do. But we're still frustrated that we don't have answers for our tenants yet. I hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret Malloy. So I have several comments. One of them is you couldn't struggled last month to say why you couldn't refund all of the monies assessed in 2017, and you said it's because of money spent. All Brown Act violation. You struggled to formulate wording for your motion to suggest to the city that they refund as much as possible. Amateur hour. You've got $1.8 million. You've never done this before. It's our money. You can't even, like, say... Steve said he couldn't repeat his own motion. This is not amateur hour. You're destroying our town. Do you know how many properties are vacant? Now Stephen Blanchard put three of his properties for sale. You are destroying the essence of this town. It's built on the backs of artists and people of color. You people, who do you represent? Jeremy Weinstein? The major property owner in the bid besides the city? You don't represent Venice. Thank you. Okay. Thanks to everyone for attending the meeting. We appreciate it. Uh, thanks to everyone on the board. We're very much looking forward to the start of services, uh, we, which, which are happening very soon. And we will keep you posted about the, uh, the launch. And we'll make sure that you have details to provide your tenants and employees. With that, it's 11.29 and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you.
talk to Larry every day. I talk to Larry every day. We want to talk I don't know why. So, you don't know what you're signing? I signed a contract with the library like you installed. And then a few years ago, I signed a contract with the library to install Helen Key Light. So, I don't know if there were two people there. They are my friends. I don't know. Oh,